Melatonin plays a crucial role in regulating our sleep-wake cycle. Many people, especially those dealing with insomnia or irregular sleep patterns, have tried melatonin supplements to increase its levels. But not everyone tolerates them. So if for whatever reason you want to increase melatonin naturally without taking melatonin supplements, this video is for you. I'll go over all the necessary nutrients and cofactors that are proven to boost melatonin and help you sleep better. Before we get started, let's quickly recap what melatonin actually is. It is a hormone that is produced naturally by your pineal gland, which is a tiny P-shaped organ located deep in your brain. Melatonin is often referred to as the sleep hormone because of its role in managing your body's internal clock, also known as your circadian rhythm. This internal clock helps regulate when we feel awake and when we feel sleepy, especially in response to light. As it gets dark in the evening, your pineal gland produces and then releases melatonin into the bloodstream, which signals to your body that it's time to wind down for sleep. On the other hand, when it's bright, melatonin production is suppressed, helping you stay alert. Even though melatonin is mainly produced in the brain, smaller amounts can also be made in places like your gut, retina, and even skin. That's because melatonin doesn't just promote sleep, it also has antioxidative properties and plays a role in regulating your immune system. So it's really a multi-purpose hormone, even though its influence on sleep is still the most well-known function. To understand how we can boost melatonin naturally, we need to look at how exactly it is synthesized. What you need to understand is that melatonin is made from serotonin, the mood-stabilizing neurotransmitter. Serotonin, in turn, comes from the amino acid tryptophan. So the key steps in melatonin production look like this. Basically, it begins with tryptophan, which we get from our diet, which is then converted into 5-HTP, aka 5-hydroxytryptophan. 5-HTP is then converted into serotonin, the neurotransmitter. Finally, when it's dark, because again, melatonin production is light sensitive, serotonin is converted into melatonin by two enzymes. N-acetyltransferase and hydroxyindole-O-methyltransferase. Now, there are several nutrients that are required for this process to work properly, and I want to talk about the most important ones now. That way, you can boost your body's own production naturally without having to take external melatonin. The first is magnesium. Magnesium plays a role as a cofactor in the synthesis process by supporting the activity of the enzyme N-acetyltransferase. Like I just explained, this enzyme is crucial for the conversion of serotonin into melatonin. Magnesium itself is also one of the most potent calming minerals out there. It acts as a natural beta blocker by reducing the effect adrenaline has on you. It also binds to and activates GABA receptors, and GABA is a neurotransmitter that essentially slows down nerve activity. This keeps your brain from going into overdrive. When you're low on magnesium, all these processes are compromised and you might find yourself stuck in fight or flight mode when you constantly feel like you're on edge. Magnesium also plays a role in relaxing your muscles by pushing calcium out of the muscle cells, which then helps release tension. Unfortunately, magnesium deficiency and a state of sympathetic dominance, so again, constantly feeling on edge and being stuck in fight or flight, are very common today. One form of magnesium called magnesium 3 and 8 has been getting a lot of attention lately when it comes to melatonin and magnesium's effects on your brain. It contains threonic acid, a type of sugar that is derived from vitamin C, which seems to help the body absorb magnesium quicker and cross the blood-brain barrier. This makes it especially appealing if you're looking for a fast-acting effect on your brain, like when you're trying to fall asleep. But the claim that only magnesium 3 and 8 can cross the blood-brain barrier isn't entirely true. Other forms of magnesium have also been shown to affect the brain, and they tend to be much cheaper. They just might not act as quickly, but for me personally, the difference was never that noticeable, so I tend to stick with other magnesium forms instead. A good daily dose for most people is between 200 to 500 milligrams of magnesium, but it's best to split this daily dose into several smaller doses that you take throughout the day. For example, you could take 100 to 200 milligrams in the evening to help promote better sleep. This approach makes sure that you avoid taking too much at once, which can lead to diarrhea. Next, we have vitamin B6. 
It also plays a crucial role in melatonin production because it's involved in the conversion of the amino acid tryptophan into serotonin, which again is then converted into melatonin. The key step where B6 comes into play is the conversion of 5-HTP to serotonin because it requires B6 as a cofactor. So without enough of it, your body will make less serotonin, which then means it will also lower your melatonin production. B6 also helps with other processes that affect sleep. For example, it enhances dream recall, meaning you're more likely to remember your dreams after waking up. Some people even report having more intense and vivid dreams when they take B6, especially in the form of the activated form P5P. So if you decide to supplement B6, start slow and only gradually increase the dose. Most B6 supplements come in doses between 20 to 100 mg. And like I said before, I would start on the lower end of that and see how your body reacts. Third is zinc. Zinc plays a more indirect but very important role in melatonin synthesis. It isn't directly involved in the biochemical conversion steps that we talked about before, but it helps support other enzymes and processes that help your body produce and handle melatonin effectively. For example, zinc supports the function of the pineal gland where melatonin is produced, and like magnesium, it helps increase GABA levels, which calms the brain and nervous system. On top of that, Studies also suggest that zinc can improve overall sleep quality by promoting deeper, more restful sleep. So if your zinc levels are low, you might not see it directly in your melatonin levels, but your overall sleep quality will still suffer. Zinc supplements are usually taken in doses between 10 to 30 milligrams. And like B6, it can cause side effects, so also start slow here. Next, we have tryptophan and 5-HTP. Obviously, you can also supplement the amino acid tryptophan, which is the starting point for serotonin production and therefore also the starting point for melatonin production. The problem is that tryptophan can also be used to make other things in your body, like vitamin B3, for example. Because of this, and because it is three steps removed from melatonin, tryptophan is usually not the best precursor to it. Instead, 5-HTP is a more direct precursor because it bypasses the initial conversion step from tryptophan. That means it can help increase melatonin levels more quickly and more effectively than tryptophan, which makes it a good supplement to try out for mood support and overall improved sleep. A normal dose of 5-HTP is around 50 to 200 milligrams. And then we have methyl donors. They are a little more complex than the other nutrients we've discussed so far. Methyl donors are nutrients that increase methylation, which is a biochemical process that adds a methyl group to other things like hormones, neurotransmitters, and even your DNA. This process of methylation is also involved in melatonin synthesis during the last step of its production. It is done by the enzyme hydroxyindole O methyltransferase, which methylates serotonin to turn it into melatonin. Without enough methyl donors like methionine, SAMe or TMG, this process might not work to its optimal capacity. It's not necessarily the first thing I would look at in terms of melatonin production because most people's methylation works fine. But if you happen to know that you are an under-methylator, then also know that your melatonin levels will be affected and supplementing methyl donors can help you. Before I end this video, let me quickly list a few other helpful nutrients that aren't necessarily involved in your melatonin production, but still improve overall sleep quality. Calcium. Like zinc, calcium also helps stimulate the pineal gland. So it makes sure the pineal gland functions properly, especially at night when it needs to produce melatonin. There is research that has shown that a calcium deficiency can lead to disruptions in sleep patterns. It also works together with magnesium in muscle relaxation and neurotransmitter function. So while calcium isn't a direct player in producing melatonin, it is a critical part of the overall environment that supports healthy melatonin production and release. That's also why your mom used to tell you to drink a warm glass of milk if you couldn't sleep. Then we have epigenin, which is a bioflavonoid found naturally in chamomile tea, which has been used to help people fall asleep for decades. There are also epigenin supplements that you can try but I would probably just stick with chamomile tea unless you notice huge improvements. 
And lastly, we have theanine, which is a non-protein amino acid, meaning it's not one that your body uses to build proteins or tissue, but it still plays an important role in many biochemical processes. One of its key functions is helping with neurotransmitter control, which is why it's often associated with promoting relaxation. Theanine won't necessarily make you feel sleepy because it's not a sedative, but it can help you stay calm and focused. It does this by balancing your brain waves. You can try adding it to your sleep stack and see if you notice any lasting effects. Many people do.